Okay, uh, all right, one more time to today's class. My name is Sophie Maxwell, and uh, this is Godzilla Principles. Today, we shall be looking at the common mistakes you'll definitely come across uh, in an English language text. Okay, uh, for those who will be writing very soon, I mean the IELTS test, you expect it to put a whole lot of concepts into play in order to get a very high score. If you're looking at a band score of seven, uh, 7.5, 8, you need to work on your context, most especially in your writing session. So for today's class, we shall be taking a good peek at the common mistakes you definitely come across in an English language text. So what I've just done uh, quickly is to create sentences that have these mistakes, and our job will be to identify the errors these mistakes have, and we connect them to paragraph development. So let's start off with the first uh, sentence here. Paul enjoys dancing in the field while Mary fancies to sing. Now this looks like a very simple everyday sentence, but something is basically wrong with this uh, uh, sentence. So what I want us to do quickly is to pay attention to how this sentence actually could be wrong. So I start off with this word here, dancing. That is a gerund. And the rule of gerund states that once a gerund is used in the first part of a sentence, a gerund must conclude it. Here you have to sing, which is an infinitive. Infinitive and gerund are both known as nominalization, and you can use these two different pairs together in a single sentence. So for this sentence, it is grammatically inappropriate in a way because I've started off my sentence with a gerund, then I'm ending up with an infinitive. This is totally out of place. So what we're going to do is to change the sentence structure to either gerund both ways or infinitive both ways. So I'll say, Paul enjoys dancing here. And I'll say in the field, why Mary fancies, we could say singing. So I could just say sing, singing as the case might be. So you should just uh, pay attention to uh, how you connect uh, these words, very important. So I can just say sing here to replace what we have here. So I would rather say, dancing singing rather than saying dancing to sing okay i hope i spoke english there so the rule is once i use a gerund here i end up with a gerund if i have an infinitive i end up with an infinitive so how do i know an infinitive an infinitive must be preceded by the preposition to then i have a verb afterwards coming in there but since i started off with a gerund here i should end up with a gerund and singing here comes into place as my uh, answer here Moving on to the second sentence, the old man left the house who slept alone in the cabin. Now look at it carefully here. We have who slept alone in the cabin becomes what we call a modifier. A modifier should give us an idea of what the subject or the object is all about. It, in a way, it gives us a clearer picture, like a description, an adjective in a way in a layman's language. Uh, that is what the modifier does. But the basic rule here is a modifier must be used directly after the noun it modifies. And here, the noun here is the old man. Okay, so if the noun is the old man here and we have who sleep um, alone in the cabin, so we, we've said that these can just best fit in here. Okay, so basically the sentence should have read the old man left the house who sleeps better and not sleep, because we know that the old man here is singular. Okay, so whatever comes afterwards here also the singular. So we'll say the old man left the house who sleeps alone in the cabin would be wrong. But I say the old man who sleeps alone in the cabin left the house. So remember, all modifiers must be used directly after the noun they modify. I guess I'm speaking English. Wonderful. Moving on to the third sentence here. Everyone brought their bags. So what is basically wrong here? We have the indefinite everyone here used directly with a plural possessive. And the rule is if I must use the indefinite, I must use them with a singular possessive and not a plural. There as used here is a plural possessive and makes the sentence inappropriate. Everyone naturally should go with a singular verb and a singular possessive, including a reflexive. So if I have everyone, everybody, they all should be used with a singular 
verb, a singular possessive. So dear here, she read is, or, I'll say, or. So I can say dear because I'm referring to uh, a singular uh, personal idea as a case might be. Everyone brought is or a bag. So the S here goes out because I'm referring to just one person. Hope you got that there. Wonderful. Moving straight to the fourth question here. The decision of the landlords have been taken for granted. Now, what could possibly be wrong with this? The subject here, the decision here, is singular in nature. Okay. Now, let's pay attention to this carefully. If the landlord here is what we call the parenthetical phrase. A parenthetical phrase is a type of phrase that describes the subject. In a way, it comes like a phrase and begins with a preposition. In some cases, an adverb. But note carefully, the parenthetical phrase must not decide the singular nature of the verb. So whether your verb is singular or plural, the parenthetical phrase cannot decide it. So if I take away this phrase out of the sentence, I'll say the decision have been taken for granted. Now here, the revelation of what type of verb we need to use comes into play. Now we know the decision here is singular in nature. Have here is plural. So we can use have here, we likely use has as a replacement because here the decision becomes our subject. So regardless that we have landlords here, a lot of students will pick up landlord as a subject and they'll say herb is better. But remember, landlord is part of the parenthetical phrase we indicated earlier in, so it would be wrong to use have there. So better still will say the decision of the landlord has been taken for granted because the subject here is decision and not landlords. I guess I'm speaking English. Good. The fifth sentence here, the incident is very ugly. Uh, what could be possibly wrong here? It looks so good. Clinically, looking at it there, the word ugly here is what we call an absolute adjective. What are absolute adjectives? Absolute adjectives are adjectives that can't be graded, meaning you can't give them class anymore. Ugly is ugly. You can't say there's bigger ugliness or a little ugliness. Other adjectives include dead. Once something is dead, it's dead. You can say more dead or less dead. Uh, adequate is another word. And finally, we have sufficient uh, as another adjective. Complete is a very good one there too. So mostly when you have these adjectives, you need not put um, an intensifier in front of them. So very, so, to, those are intensifiers. You can't use in front of these adjectives. So in this case, we just finally take this out of the structure. So we have the incident is very ugly, as just simple as that. Okay, so in a way we've analyzed all sentences and there are other sentences really. And there, what we just did is to highlight the basic key factors that makes them inappropriate. So quickly take a rundown on them. The first one says Paul enjoys dancing in the field while Mary Francis to sing. So we had issues with our parallelism here. So we tried using the gerund and we ended up with infinitive. That is pretty wrong. So we start off with a gerund and end with a gerund. So the sentence you read, Paul enjoys dancing in the field while Mary Francis singing. That makes it uh, a little bit more appropriate. Uh, the second says the old man left the house who sleeps, who sleep alone in the cabin. Here we have the old man as the noun and who sleeps in the cabin here is the modifying element. And the rule is the modifier must be used directly after the noun, it modifies. So clearly the sentence should read, the old man left the house. Uh, the old man who sleeps alone in the cabin left the house. Quickly, looking at the third sentence here, everyone brought their bags. Remember we have indefinite everyone here. Uh, in most cases, a lot of students see it as a plural uh, word, but in grammar usage, it is singular in nature. And the rule is a singular verb, a singular possessive and a singular reflexive must be used directly with them. So it's wrong to say dear bags. So we say is or er bag. Remember, not bags, bag. At fourth sentence there, we have the decision of the landlords have been taken for granted. Here we have the issue of a parenthetical phrase. And in this case, we do not necessarily have to uh, pay attention to the words or the nouns that are embedded in the parenthetical phrase. So in this case, the landlord here cannot be seen as a noun or, or the subject of the sentence. Rather, decision should be decided because it's outside of parenthetical phrase. So since decision is singular in nature, as here will become has. Uh, sorry, have becomes 
has in application. And finally, the incident is very ugly. Remember, ugly is an absolute adjective, can't be graded. So we take away the intensifier here, very, and the sentence reads, the incident is ugly. So this is just like a picking up sentences. Let's see how it will look like in a simple paragraph. Uh, moving on to the next uh, page here. So this is a paragraph that uh, just made up to impute all those uh, corrections uh, we have made. So let's start off with the first part of the paragraph, which is the first sentence. The domination of word powers have led now, did we notice something here? Great. Here, downwards here, I have what I call my parenthetical phrase. I mentioned earlier on that. Now, powers is a key word here I used of. Now, the key subject in this sentence is domination, not powers. Domination is singular in nature. So these of here, it's wrong, so it should have been has. Because uh, this parenthetical phrase element cannot decide what the verb here uh, will be. So since domination is singular, we should have has uh, and usage there. So it led to the possibility of infringing and to control. Remember, we have the issue of parallelism here. So I started with, an, with a gerund, I ended up with an infinity. So this should, uh, sorry, this should change here from to control to controlling, okay? So this will actually help us to understand how these are uh, items should be used in a uh, grammatical context here. So once you start off with a gerund, end with a gerund. You start off with an infinitive, end with an infinitive. And also you should know some verbs are better of use as infinitive markers, uh, while others are best used as a gerund markers. Moving on carefully, so we have infringing and controlling over here, uh, developing nations around uh, the globe. However, nations of sovereign consciousness. So I have another marker here, introducing a parenthetical phrase, which is a, more like a very uh, uh, serious issue when it comes to constructing sentences. A lot of students use the parenthetical phrases in wrong manner. I, I actually call that beautiful nonsense anyways. So once we pay attention to this, we find out that nations here is our key subject here. And since nations is plural in nature, has here will have to change to have. I guess that's clear now. You just need to pay attention to the words that come before the preposition and it makes it easier. So nations are serving consciousness, have, not has, her propelled out of these uh, draconic uh, grief and the sentence ends there. So moving on to the other part of the paragraph, we have everybody should be concerned with your individual contributions. Now let's look at it carefully. We have everybody here, which is more like an indefinite marker. Remember the rule is they should be used with a singular verb a singular possessive or singular uh, reflexive. So since I have everybody, this should definitely change to is, or, or. Okay. With this noun, we could say uh, in everybody should be concerned with is or individual contributions at all levels. So this shows clearly how the connection between everybody here flows down to uh, there here as the case might be. So moving on contributions at all levels because it's very adequate. Remember we have adequate here, which is an, uh, an absolute adjective we mentioned earlier on. We used ugly in the previous example. Adequate is another example you can use as an uh, absolute adjective. And remember, we don't need an intensifier in front of it. So we just have adequate, it's not very adequate. Moving on, so to work together since third world countries have to develop that are still uh, developing. Okay, so I, I'm looking at carefully here. Now, what is still developing? You get a picture. What is still developing? Is it develop our countries? This is a little confusion there. So once we are not sure what has been developing and we use it this way, we've just had what we call a misplaced modifier. That's an M, a misplaced modifier. So to avoid this quagmire, we just bring this back here. So we have our since third world countries that are still developing have to develop. Clear now? Okay, quickly, let's uh, make all corrections with this media in a, a proper context uh, in the paragraph here. So I'll start off with uh, this. So remember we said here, the domination is the keyword here. So it's a singular, so I have to change these from have down to cause. Okay, I'd like to the possibility of infringing. Remember, infringing is a gerund in continuous form, so I have to just take away this infinity 
here, then I have base in continuous form. Academics are controlling developing nations around the globe. However, nations of sovereign consciousness have, remember referring to nations here as a keyword, so this has to change to have. Okay, propelled out of this draconic grief. So everybody should be concerned with, remember this should change. So we said earlier in here, once you have uh, an indefinite like every uh, body, so this should actually go with a singular possessive. So we could say everybody uh, should be concerned with ease or, or individual contributions at all levels because it's very adequate to work together since third world countries. So we look up carefully here, we agree that this should not fit in, okay? So that definitely should go out because we don't need an intensifying, but of an absolute additive to work together since third world countries have to develop that as to develop. And so this item here, which is a modifier, should come directly after country. So we just place that in there. Dirt or still developing. Okay, so we quickly just take uh, these out here. At the end here, to just go out. Okay, so in a way we've made a enormous correction to this paragraph. The paragraph should definitely sit this way. The domination of world powers has led to the possibilities of infringing and controlling developing nations around the globe. However, nations of sovereign consciousness have, not has, have propelled out of this track and a grave. Everybody should be concerned with ease or her individual contributions. Remember, we changed ease or her from their uh, contributions, so ease or her contributions at all levels because it's adequate, not very adequate, it's adequate to work together since the since third world countries, remember we're not putting a modifier here that are still developing, have to develop. So in a way, we just put in all our corrections from the initial uh, sentence a person we've made earlier on. And with a paragraph this way, you tend to have a very strong band score from essays written uh, in this manner, which hope you learned a lot from this. I wish to hear from you soon. You can comment, make comments on my YouTube channel. Probably send a message as SOP Maxwell at gmail uh, that's come. Upcoming, I shall be introducing to you a video that will be showing you how to write a perfect agree disagree introduction or probably introduction on your advantage disadvantage as a type, your reasoning solution, how to answer a simple direct question, or probably discussing both sides and giving your opinion. Have to see from you soon. Have a wonderful time. This goes to our principles. I remain SP Maxwell. Bye-bye.